Shalom, it's Tehillah from the Kifar, and this Freestyle Friday video um, is going to talk a little bit about the coronavirus, but really about empathy. So I'm not going to get into like the details of the virus and, and all that scientific stuff because I'm not a medical professional um, and I believe in staying in my lane. So that's not what I'm going to cover at all. Um, but you know we've we've heard a lot of things there's a lot of information out there that is available and so you have people that have a wide range of opinions right you have those who feel like this is mass hysteria for no reason and it's being overblown uh, for whatever reason you have those who believe that the hysteria is justified and they are very fearful and, and trying to do whatever they can to prepare um, for whatever may come and then of course you have all the people who are in the middle and, and range from one end to the other regardless of where you fall in that spectrum, I think it's important to understand and acknowledge the fact that there are people who whose experiences are different from yours and that you can be understanding and compassionate towards those people, even if their experiences are not yours. So even if you have not been personally affected or victimized um, by the virus in any way, it doesn't mean that you have to completely discount or dismiss the experiences and the stories of people who are being affected by it. I think just, just recognizing that multiple perspectives and multiple experiences are valid is a really important thing to do. And it's something that is missing, um, at least for me, from my perspective, in a lot of the like social media interactions, people are, are looking at just what affects them. And if they are not specifically being affected by something, in this case, the virus, then it's as though it doesn't really matter across the board. So regardless of how you feel about the entire situation, pandemic, whatever it is that you wanna call it, there, there are certain facts that are undeniable. One is that there are people who are dying. At an objective level, if we're just talking about numbers, the death rate, again, thankfully, is very low. But again, that's a very objective view. If your family member, God forbid, is in that low number, then it, it does, it's not low to you, okay? It's, it's much, much more personal. It's also a fact that people are being negatively affected in other ways. Um, people who have not necessarily been exposed to the virus in any way, but because because of the closings of the, the schools and fairs and, and any sort of large gathering, that has ramifications for a lot of people. There are a lot of retail workers, food service workers, a lot of people who are the backbone of a lot of these institutions who don't have paid sick leave. And a lot of them cannot they're not working now. And some of these companies have stepped up and offered leave to their employees, but not all of them. And so again, it's not my personal experience. I, I work from home, so that doesn't concern me personally, but I can still have compassion for people that are going through that and understand that it must be a really scary thing to not be working, not have an income, and not have a clear timeline on when, if and when you're going to be able to go back to work um, for schools that are being closed. I've taught in public schools and I am comfortable saying that a lot of teachers in public schools will also share with you that a lot of students get their food at school. You have students who rely on school for breakfast and for lunch and there, there are some districts that are still providing meals um, or making accommodations for students who need food, but again, not all of them. And so regardless of whether you think that they should be eating at school or not, the fact is that you now have students and parents who rely on the school breakfast and school lunch who now have to find alternatives. And if some of these parents have also been temporarily laid off, whatever you want to call it, they're not going to work, it's a hardship all around. Um, you have a lot of entrepreneurs who were planning to attend fairs. For a lot of, um, particularly the people who work in crafts and who sell products, they really rely on, especially those who don't necessarily have a storefront or who don't get a lot of traffic online, they rely on on these in-person events for a large um, share of their income. And so you have you know, entrepreneurs who shell out thousands of dollars to make sure that they have enough inventory to sell at these events that are now being shut down. A lot of them are happening after the vendors have already done their travel and realize that it's now going to be closed down and they have to carry all of their things that they expected to sell back home. And when you are an entrepreneur, you know that you, you have to work really hard for every dollar that you get. And so there's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of insecurity that a lot of people are facing. So again, just keep that in mind, even if it's not your particular situation.
situation, even if you don't feel affected by what is happening around the coronavirus, just always keeping in mind that there are other experiences and there are people who are being affected by it. It's okay and it's good to feel for other people and to be empathetic um, and show compassion and understand that, wow, even though this is not my story, like I understand that it is other people's stories and I don't want to sound too preachy because I'm not a preachy person, but it was something that I, I thought was really important to talk about. Everybody doesn't have the same experience and we can be more sensitive um, to other people's experiences, even if they don't necessarily mirror our own. Okay, so that's it. Thank you for watching this video. Um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and I will see you for the next video. Later out.